Hello and welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm with my buddy Nathan today, and we're going to talk about a unique system called Ontact. It's a production monitoring system that I'm about to learn a bit more about, created by Wolfram here in Austin, Texas. And this unique capability of this software might benefit you as well, which is why I'm excited to share this opportunity with Nathan, with the audience, with myself even, to learn a bit more. So Nathan, thank you so much. I always appreciate your time. Let's learn a little bit more about this system. All right. Thanks, Tony. Um, okay, so Ontact. Ontact is, like you said, it's kind of a, a production management, production operating system for shops. And that encompasses... Um, seeing what your what your production is there are a lot of different things that do production monitoring but it also brings in tool tracking um, notifications from different subsystems on the machines like the care and engineering products um, and it also brings in inspection so these are all different modules that you can enable the cool thing is they're all built to work together so the more you use the different components the more value it provides to your shop and i'll show you just a little bit some of the concepts that that go into it that make it different uh, even starting on just the machine monitoring side yeah i'd love to see some more about it there's like you mentioned there's a a lot of machine monitoring erp systems out there so to mm -hmm. know something Unique, created by you, I am intrigued, or created by Wolfram, I am intrigued to learn some more about it. Yeah. So when you look at a lot of um, machine monitoring systems, you might see things like just a, a color-coded chart of is the machine running or not running through the day. Or you end up with a, a bunch of cards representing machines, and they're all different colors. And I call this just like the disco ball. Like if I am, you know, am, <laughs> Uh, a shop owner, uh, or I'm a operations manager. And you am. And I am. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you're looking at that, what is the action? Like, at what point do I need to stop planning on the call that I'm about to make to negotiate something and get up and go focus on the shop floor? So we try and distill it down into real signals. So the disco ball that that doesn't do a whole lot for me. There are a lot of those formats. You know, if I'm just looking at a bunch of percentages, oh man, it turns out people are not great at looking at numbers, picking out the highest, ordering them in their head, and, and taking action. It takes a lot of extra mental processing to do that. So you end up with what we have here. And this is, this concept is something that we borrowed from kind of the theory of constraints where you know you keep your your drum going whatever your constraint is you keep it on pace and if that's on pace then everything else is okay so if i was to look at these each one of these is is representing a machine I'll keep my hand down each one of these is representing a machine and what we see at a glance in this thumbnail this blue line is the pace that we expect to be producing parts. So I'm not looking at is the machine running or not. That is represented by the color over here. But what I'm looking at is am I dropping off parts at the pace that I'm expecting to. So if I have a target line that I have set for this particular part, um, then I have my parts being produced as long as my slope is parallel to that line, just mentally you glance at it and these things are chasing the same targets. So I'm comfortable with the production on these machines. Now we're partway through the day and there is a forecast line on each one. And I see, okay, we're gonna be pretty close to, you know, a, uh, a normal good finish on this one. We're gonna be ahead of target on this one. This one's going to come in ahead of target. This one may be a little low. None of these are super concerning, but it lets you glance at it and immediately start planning, when do I need to take action? Do I need to get up right now? It's running, so maybe I get out there in a few minutes. 
the longer it's not running, that forecast line is just going to tilt down and down and down. So it's a way to very quickly absorb what is going on with the shop. So if my line was under my target entirely, but the slope is the same, they got a late start, you know, the next time I'm out there, I want to talk to somebody, figure out why we got a late start, but it gives me a lot of additional context, just the way the lines are shaped. Through forecasting? Yes. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So, that's great. And I can jump into any one of these machines. You know, we were looking at one of these machines earlier, and if we jump into a machine's individual production page, we can see all kinds of different patterns. So this is an entire week of production on a machine, and this is what a basically an automated process will look like. So these are stops for bar changes primarily. I can also overlay when tool changes were made, and machine alarms, and just about anything else. So a lot of those were low-level alarms. Now. If I come over to something like this, this is a much lumpier production and this is something without automation. So this cycle time is similar to that other part, but we end up with 120 parts and no work across the weekend versus something like this where we get you know, 700 plus parts uh, and a nearly smooth production series all the way through the weekend. So, um, hmm. yeah, those, those visualizations, are, visualizations are nice. Now, I'll jump over to another thing that we've got here, which is tooling. And that's why I consider this a lot more than just seeing how the machines are running. So, this is basically the tools for every program that is loaded in the entire shop right now. And I can order it by where they are at in their life. So if I'm scanning through the parts, I've got on this machine LB3, I've got two parts remaining before these parts need to be changed. And what am I looking at there when I see two of four corners used? Okay, so indexable tools, we can tell it how many corners they have, and instead of changing the tool, you will just index it and get more life. Mm -hmm. okay. So it'll let you know when you are officially done with that tool. Is all of this connected to the Karen Engineering products as well? It is, yes. Interesting. Yeah. So people can be looking at individual machines, every machine in the shop. If somebody stops in on the weekend and they're just going to do a high level, you know, what tools do I need to change, they can come here and see it. To me, this is obviously faster than going out to each machine and looking at everything individually. But I also look at this and go, well, there's a lot of information coming in as well, which could also take a lot of time. Is there a way to glance at it and go, well, everything's running smoothly or I have one or two problems? Because obviously we could deep dive into this and look at every sure. tool and every machine yep. and everything that goes along with it. But if I'm walking in on a Monday and I got to get something done, right? Mm -hmm. Can I just pull this up, get a home screen that says, everything's okay, or you better go check out this one machine <laughs> because you got an alarm, and then yep. be able to go solve that and then get back to the deep diving maybe later in the day when I'm trying to figure out how to you know, constantly make my processes yeah, better. Yeah. For sure, and we actually have probably one step uh, better than that, I'll say. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> so the machines, when they reach a point where they actually need something done, they reach out to us and they talk. So this is Slack, and it is, it's just like Microsoft Teams, which is just like group chat. So each one of our machines has a channel that it talks to us through. And if I just look at this one, you know, it's posting out shift reports. Um, it posts out if there was an alarm, you know, door interlock. Just about everybody tries to hit go before the door is all the way closed. <laughs> um, if there's inspection on the um, 
built in where we're doing a probe cycle. Mm -hmm. We have some of that report out directly for key features just to let us know. This one had a you know, a total indicated run out of 11 thousandths on a particular feature that we're doing there. So we will have them, when they cross a, a tooling threshold, the different tools we have set, so when there are 10 parts left or 20% left or whatever threshold we set, it will notify us that you need to go take action on that machine. And Nathan, is this happening simultaneously all the time it's receiving information sending you messages you immediately get the updates or alerts if necessary and I'm even I see you shaking your head and I, I want <laughs> to give you a chance to answer these appropriately but I'm also intrigued by I'm looking at this screen right now and uh, it says one extreme alarm saved two hundred and seven dollars <laughs> Uh, this is also calculating cost savings? How is this all? This is amazing. It is. It is. So that's a, one of the really fun parts. When you start to bring different data together, you get like these incredible opportunities. So, you know, we're running the parts, and then with the Karen data coming in, basically as we have alarms, we can calculate what the savings would be. And I, I've got kind of an interesting calculator here. Almost feels a little bit like a video game. It's, it's, <laughs> like I'm playing a slots bit, and I'm like, hey, cha ching, yeah. I just got some savings. All right. You know, it's kind of fun. Exactly. So, this cost savings calculator, basically for anybody's shop, uh, we customize it. And when you have a Karen wear event or extreme event, we basically we say, what could have happened if that alarm had not stopped the machine? And what is the value of that? So we put a value and then a frequency. So, you know, one in 250 times that you get an extreme alarm. And this is probably very, very um, low. I'll say it's probably more frequent than this that you get a really, when an extreme alarm happens, you have avoided something very, very bad. So 150 or one in 250 chances is very generous. But if you lose a spindle on something like an Akuma, between downtime and spindle and everything else, you know, uh, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars is not out of the realm of possibility. So a one in 250 occurrences, we attribute that. And what that comes down to is each extreme alarm, we give you credit for $120 saved. Hmm. Now, a lot of times when people are buying stuff for their shop and they're trying to justify things, you see a big expense, you hear a lot of fancy commitments and what people say it'll do. And then when they come by like later in the year and they're like, okay, can you justify all the things that you did? This is a way to justify it. And you can talk through this, change all the numbers for your own shop and make it just completely like deep in your heart you know that it is believable and then just watch the savings and the justification build it's so for a guy like myself who is and if you wouldn't mind just going back to that screen real quick yep. for a guy like myself who uh is learning about this technology learning about this software you mentioned that i can change it to whatever or wherever I feel comfortable with. Right now we're looking at a machine tool spindle ruined, $30,000, one in 250 times that you save an alarm. Mm -hmm. These are the mathematical calculations that you feel comfortable with and I can adjust those based on my own preferences, right? And the machine tool loses alignment, $5,000, one out of 100. So you're playing the odds of what typically happens based on statistics and numbers. Mm -hmm. And I can change it based on what I feel is the same. But regardless, wherever we feel comfortable, we constantly get a reminder that says, hey, by the way, this could have cost you X amount of money. And mm -hmm. you just saved it because you didn't happen. And this is going to allow us to not even fully... Well, it's definitely going to help us understand why we purchased it, but be confident over and over again mm -hmm. in the reasons we purchased it and just constantly look ourselves in the mirror and go, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I did that for this reason. I'm now looking at tool holder broken, one in 25 chance, $300. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. 
For, I'm a big video game guy. I'm a big Star Wars guy. I think you are as well. Big yeah, Marvel yeah. guy. So these types of things are entertaining to me and entertaining in a way that's like a video game, but in a practical life that allows me mm -hmm. to feel like I'm doing good for me. I'm doing good for my family. I'm doing good for others. I'm doing good for my company. And all of it is a constant reminder of like, when we get those likes on social media or something where our placebo, our mind right, goes, right. good job, good job, you're doing mm -hmm. the right thing, good job. I really like this aspect of your software. And I know I'm a bit long-winded on it, but I think that's because I'm excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I mean, we love it. And it, it, it lets you look, I mean, at a, in a lot of different ways. You can look and see if people are struggling with something. I mean, if they keep hitting alarms, man, your process is not stable enough. And... I guarantee you, just almost any shop, people run and they will start to absorb the problems. They will just make them go away however they can. And it's through their best efforts, right? Like they'll just, they'll start changing the inserts at the frequency that... Feels know, comfortable. That feels comfortable for them, that keeps the machine running. They feel like they're doing the right thing and, and on many levels they are, you know. But by the same token, you want to know if your process isn't stable. So, you know, this is putting flags out there that, hey, you know, you're not as stable as you think you are. You need to come address this to make it easier for the person running the machine, make it more profitable for everybody. So that's, that's, that's how we like to look at things. And the software really helps you do that. So what else would you like to show me on this software before we conclude this incredible interview? Because you know, this type of, of mapping and forecasting and understanding of my shop. I mean, I don't own a shop like you do. But everywhere I go and everything I learn, I think if I decided to start a shop, it would immediately <laughs> be profitable. And maybe I'm just driving my ego into this conversation. But learning things like this allows us to succeed from day one. And even if we've had a shop for a century, mm -hmm. implementing this now gives us the information we think we know to either prove that we're right or learn something new and become better. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's one, two more small things that I'll highlight. So when I say that you have different components and when they're all working together, you get incredible additional information. And, you know, some of the information can feel like overkill, but it all does kind of circle back. So we're tracking our tool, tool changes in here. If I go to any individual part, so I clicked on a part on that page, I can see where each tool was in its life when it manufactured that part. Hmm. So, you know, this was the 911th part out of a 1500 part life that that tool made. So when you have quality issues, you can go back and look very specifically what was the state of the machine and the tooling when you made that which I have not seen anywhere else. Now, one other element here. That's good, you are Nathan. Yes, I am Nathan. <laughs> so, this is the inspection side of it. So, you know, there's a lot of great inspection software out there right now. This is something we built. We've been working with different inspection softwares for a long time. Okay, we enter our data. I'm not going to show the, the data input interface, but it's fairly streamlined. It presents you just with what you're inspecting at the time. Uh, of course, it you know calculates all your SPC numbers and it trends things. This also, if parts leave control, will notify us so that we know to take action. But Part of the reason I show this, it's part of the software, but also it is like the third part of a super powerful thing that we have all contained, which is the cutting force data from Karen, the actual like where tools are in their lives, and then the dimensional output. And that is kind of like the trifecta that lets you build the uh, eventually kind of a 
like a holy grail uh, flux capacitor of uh, of manufacturing. You know, people keep trying to say like, what can I, what data can I take and use to really forecast how tools perform and get into you know AI or machine learning, and those are the elements that you need, and that is what we're bringing together. So that's that's down the road a little bit. There are a lot of fun different ways to use this, but that's something that you know just has us fired up for where we're going in the future. And if people are as fired up as we both are and they want to learn more about this, how can they contact you? How can they find you? Where's your website? What's your home address? What's your social security <laughs> number? How can they best yeah, find you, yeah. Nathan? Yeah, so our website, we, we try and do a good job keeping up to date. So it is wolframmfg.com, so W-O-L-F-R-A-M. MFG, short for manufacturing, dot com. Perfect. Well, Nathan, that was pretty awesome. I learned a lot today. Uh, I hope everyone who's listening, who's watching, has also learned a lot. There's the website. Give Nathan a call. Super, super easy guy to talk to, as you can tell. Uh, very well articulated and thought out. So, Nathan, thank you for sharing this information. And on behalf of MTD, we do wish you continued success. All right. Thank you.